God bless these chops this morning. Thank God for another Sunday. You know, we're going to have a time of worship before we come around the world, before Brother Lewis rings the word of God. Now, wherever you are today, this morning, just, just lift your hands and praise God and worship on this, this morning. Thank you, Jesus. I will proclaim the glory of the Who can compare with the beauty of love? Forever he will be, ever he will be the Lamb upon the throne, the Lamb upon the throne. And you know, before we start, I have a message from the Lord, I believe, this morning, just some short I want to speak about. But let's be this morning the people of God that hears this morning. Let's ask the Lord to give his ears that we could hear, with a mind and a heart that we could understand. Because you know, a good word's only a good word when we put it into practice. The book of James said, not be listeners, but not to be hearers, but to be doers of the word. So let's bow our heads this morning and ask the Lord to speak to us. Lord God of heaven, my God, Jehovah Elohim, my Jesus Christ, I come before you this morning, my Lord God. I'd ask you, my Lord God, that this day, my God, you would use me for your glory, my Lord God. That, Lord, my God, that it would be nothing good the flesh and all of the spirit of the living God, that you would use me as a postman, my God, to deliver the word, my God, unto your children, my God, this day, my God, Lord. That we could put it into action, my Lord God. And I ask this, my Lord God, in the name of Jesus Christ this morning, my God, the one true and living God we ask him. In Jesus' name, and the children of God says, Amen. Do you know, uh, thank God, what the brother said before, another Sunday morning, another day closer to Jesus. I was out praying and seeking God the other night, as I believe all people should be doing out praying and seeking my local prayer path, as you know, the graveyard. And I was praying to the Lord and says, Lord, what should I bring to the people? What, sh- what do you want to speak to your people about? And you know, the Lord led me to a passage of scripture in the book of Matthew. In Matthew 7, 24 to 27, just want to look at three verses this morning. I do, and 
I want to talk about foundation this morning. That's what I want to talk about. Foundation. Now we know this is the Sermon on the Mount from Matthew 5 to Matthew 7. So we're going to have a quick overview of it. And I just want to speak about a couple of things that stuck out to me. If I had to put a title on this message this morning, it would be this what I've written down. Are we building on the right foundation? Are we building upon the right foundation? Because as born again believers, as the children of the living God, there can only be one foundation. We can't have many foundations. Christ is the foundation. He is the rock, the eternal rock that we build upon this morning. And because this year, because right doctrine leads to right foundation. When we come to the word of God and we read the word of God and we apply it, good doctrine leads to good foundation, which is Jesus Christ, the rock. The word supports, comes against and we stand upon the word of God. And that is the rock which we take our stand upon this morning. Hallelujah. Let's turn our Bibles to Matthew 7, New Testament, the end of the seventh chapter. Now, in previous of what's going on here, in the Sermon on the Mount from chapter, chapter 5 all the way through. But in chapter 7, verse 24, now he's wrapping it up. And it reads like this. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose and the winds blew against it. And that house against it, and the wind blew against that house, yet it did not fall because it had a foundation on the rock. But whoever hears these words of mind and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rain came down, streams rose, the winds blew, and beat against that house. It fell with a great crash. When Jesus finished saying these things, the crowd was amazed at his teaching. So praise God this morning. We see straight away that Jesus is in the Sermon on the Mount. He's sitting, he's, he's teaching, and he's, he wraps it up now. He brings it to a point where he says about two men. Now, the first word that speaks out, speaks out to me says, therefore. Now, what was the therefore? Previous of what all he spoke about in Matthew 5 onwards, he goes, therefore. We must look back to see what he was speaking about. He was giving the Sermon on the Mount. He was in from Matthew 5, blessed is the meek, blessed is the pure, blessed is the, the peacemaker, the salt of the earth, the city on the hill, the light of the, the world. And he talks about murder. He talks about forgiveness. He's been all through the Sermon on the Mount, but he hits the pinnacle point now. And he wants to wrap it up. And he wraps it up by saying this here. He goes, therefore, he went, there was two men. He brings it into, right into the scope of it now. This is what it's like. In this sermon, Jesus speaks about two types of men. One who listens and one who doesn't listen. But the question is, what one are you? See, we're all, we can all be one of these men. We have a role to play. What character are we this morning? Are we the man that listens and puts it into action? Or the woman? Or are we the one that doesn't listen and just puts it into our own way? See, to be a successful Christian, we, to be a successful, we must listen to the builder. And the builder this morning is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the builder. But the question is this morning is this, are we following the blueprint? Are we going to the blueprint, which is the Bible, the word of God? Are we following the blueprint or are we just doing it our own way and chucking the instructions away? Because so many people today are doing me by stone, Katoy, or we build something for the children, especially me, I don't follow the instructions. I chuck them to one side and, and when I'm finished, I've got 12 screws too many. And when the child starts playing, it starts breaking, I realise I should have followed the instructions. And it's the same for us in our Christian life. To be a successful Christian and to move on. I'm not talking about success from money in that, right? That's a prosperity gospel. But to be a successful Christian in the word of God and to build upon the right foundation, we must go to the word. See, when we look for the Sermon on the Mount, it's the highest standard of living. It's the highest standard of a Christian life. In fact, I would go as far to say it's the perfect Christian life. It's the format for a perfect Christian life if we can keep it. We can't do it our own way. Unless we put the Sermon on the Mount into practice, it will be no good to us because it's the highest standard of Christian living and it can change our lives if we allow it to change our lives. You know, so many people say, they talk about how beautiful the Beatitudes are and the Beatitudes are beautiful. But are we practising them? Are we peacemakers? Are we giving and not expecting nothing back? Are we forgiving? Are we doing what the Sermon on the Mount tells us to do? Or are we just hearers and not listeners? We'll just hear but do not about it. Because it's the perfect blueprint to build our Christianity upon. If we live by it. Now picture this, Jesus on the Sermon, he's given the full Sermon on the Mount, many people there. And it comes to close in verse 27, 24 to 27. Jesus closes the Sermon with a parable to drive the point home. And what he was driving on was the importance of obedience. 
And then Paul, it's not enough just to hear these sayings. We must put these sayings into practice. We must put these sayings, what we hear about the Sermon on the Mount, many times when we go through it verse by verse and we read it all, we just can't have chapter 5 and not have chapter 6 because we don't like the way it's Jesus has spoken about Then We jump back on the bandwagon in chapter 7. That doesn't work. It's the full sermon or nothing. That's what the Sermon on the Mount is. We take the whole package or we take none of it. We either do the whole lot or do none of it. Because it has the power to change our life if we put it into practice. So when he closes the sermon on the mount, he drives the point home what? About two men, he drives the point home with this. It was the importance of obedience. Are we obedient to the word of God? The word of God says that obedience is better than sacrifice. Are we obedient to the instructions? Are we obedient to the blueprint this morning? I've got news for it. We can't do it our way. We can't build no longer on the old-fashioned traveling way of foundation. Because that foundation was a dodgy foundation. That foundation was built upon craft. Shortcuts, lies, our law unto ourselves. I've got news for you, there's no such thing as a traveller's law. We thought we had one, but it doesn't exist, it's within our minds, it's, it doesn't exist, it's not there. So these things, when Jesus begins to say, if we put them into practice, now I just want to look at the wise man for a second, and I've written a few things down. The disciple who hears and does what Jesus commands is like a wise man who built his house on the rock, his house was referring to his life has a solid foundation in Christ. And when and when it batters the by rain and wind, it will not fall. Do you know how many times I'm nine and a half years down the road in Christianity, nine and a half years say, praise God. And do you know why I've stood the test of time? It's not because I'm good or I'm powerful, because in the, in, in the flesh I feel like giving up every day. I feel like it's too hard. But do you know what's happened? I've built upon the right foundation. I've built upon the rock. Do when trials come, and we're getting beaten at every size, Listen, trials come unexpected. They don't tell us they're coming. Temptation comes. The things of this world, it's very hard to live in this world. We're just pilgrims passing through, like I said before, yeah? But when we are rooted upon the rock, I don't know how we seem to see it through. There's a scripture in the Psalms says, those who trust in the Lord is like the mountains that cover Zion. They'll never be shaken because we're on the right foundation. The world looks and says, how can they continue? How can they go on? Do you want to know why? Because we've been rooted in Christ. And when we're rooted in God and we have the right foundation, we will continue to stand. And build, uh, our brother Terry Lee used to sing a song, I'm building on the rock of my salvation. And the banner over me is love. I'm building on the rock, Jesus Christ. And I cannot be shaken. Because why? The wise man builds on Jesus Christ. The wise man spends his time in his word. The wise man reads. The wise man not only hears the word, but he puts the word into practice. And brothers and sisters, over this nine week, at the beginning of it, when we went into lockdown, people were trash. They were going to the word of God. They were praying. They were seeking God. They were doing the things of God. But now that things are slowing down and we're not as trash no more. It's like we're taking a step back. We don't have to read the word as much. We're letting life back in. I ain't got a problem with life. Life's wonderful, yeah? If we have the right balance. And the balance must always be in God. We must always live by the blueprint. We must always live by the Bible. That doesn't make you a religious maniac. That makes you a child of God. That makes you a child of God, living right for God, living by the word. If we live by the word, we can never go wrong. We will never go wrong. When trials come, we will still stand. Because why? We've invested in the right rock. You know, many years ago, people used to use a bank called Northern Rock. 2008, the Northern Rock crashed and people lost everything. Well, let me tell you something. I'm trusting in the rock, which is Jesus Christ, and he will never crash. He will never go into recession. He will never be bankrupt because why? He is Jesus Christ, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And you can stand on that rock this morning. You can have full confidence in the rock this morning. When trials and storms come, you will be able to stand in the rock because he is the rock. Best look at the unwise man now. Now the, the other man's house might have looked the same, but it didn't stand the same because he was a law unto himself. You see, when Jesus was speaking to the crowd here, and I want to bring it into our level now it is many people profess to be christians many people i meet them all the time hallelujah i'm saved but sadly their lifestyle does not meet their profession do when they profess to be a christian they profess to love jesus i have built upon the rock the house might look the same but it won't stand the same when trials and things come in their lives it looks the same but it will not stand the same because he is alone on to himself and when the rain comes it began to sink because his foundation was not in Jesus Christ. His foundation was in Jesus. His foundation was in the things of this world. This was the man that says, I don't really need the instructions. 
I can do it my way. Do you know we have Christians today among flocks who as a law unto themselves. They do it their way. Some of them may be ignorant to the fact woman or man, not singling anybody out, is thinking, I'll do it my own way and I'll do it this way. And you don't have to come into the authority of the pastors or the ministers or the elders and this, that and whatever. Do it this way and do it that way and we'll be all right the way we are. They're all on to themselves. And what they're doing is basically is rebelling and saying, we don't need the blueprint. We don't need to come to church on a Sunday. Have you heard that one? I can have church in my own home. The Bible says don't give up meeting together. You don't have to go to the prayer meetings. I can pray in my own home. Well, in the early church, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teachings. You don't have to do that. You don't have to go witnessing. You don't have to do these things. You don't have to do these things. And what happens? They become a law unto themselves. When you bring them to the Sermon on the Mount, well, I like this, but I don't want this. It doesn't work, church. It's either all of Christ or none of Christ. There's no in between. There's no grey area this morning. We built it. It was on the right foundation. And in that time, he will never shine right because he never had the right foundation. See, these people that profess to love Christ, that I'm building on the rock, doing the trials come in their lives. And when things get hard and family circumstances or circumstances of the world, they begin to run back to the world. They begin to cry, where's God? Where's this? Nobody ever helps me go on pity trips. Because why? They never had the right foundation. They never knew the foundation. They thought they knew him. Because if you go back a few verses, Jesus says, Lord, Lord, and he said, many will come to me that day and say, Lord, Lord, speaking about judgment. Many will come to me that day and say, I never knew you. He's put a show on. Travelling people is a fact. They should be in Hollywood. We're the greatest actors known unto mankind. We can put on the mask. But are we the genuine article this morning? Are we the wise man? A man put it this way. A false processing, a, fa a false profession will only last until judgment comes. Sometimes a student in the form of trials of life, like the person who receives the seed of God's word and sh the shallow heart in Matthew 13, 49. The commitments fail when the testing comes. Many people have professed faith in Christ only to deny their faith when life becomes spiritually costly and difficult. When life becomes spiritually hard, when we hit dry areas, how do these Christians still continue? People say they're religious maniacs. No, they're not. They're just building upon the rock. Do you know the man that's not on the rock and he's built upon the sand? When trials come and they flood his life, do what happens to them people? They're flooded and washed away most times. Because why? They have been flooded with the world. Do you know the worst thing is this year? Is that we cannot allow the world to come in us. Do you know when the boat's in the water, the boat's okay. But when the water gets in the boat, the boat sinks. And that's what happens to these people. That's what happens to those who build their house on the sand. It can look the same. But Jesus can see it. He knows what's right and what's wrong. Moving on. The law was given on the mount. And here Christ lays down his principles on the mountain. Now, the law of Moses was given on a mount. Way back in Exodus, we see it. He gave a law. We come up to the sermon on the mount and Jesus is on the mount and he gives a law. And he lays down, now I know some of these, as prince and, these, are, these are kingdom principles. I'm quite aware when Jesus was speaking about the kingdom of God, these were the kingdoms of the, the, the principal kingdoms. But... It applies to us as Christians. We are children of God. Like I said, it's the highest standard of living. So is, we're going to get, get, get into that in a minute. The law of Moses applied to the outward acts, but the Sermon on the Mount applied to the inwards. When Moses gave the law, the Ten Commandments, and another 603 to go to them, they applied to outward living. It was. Moses spoke about murder. It was wrong. Well, Jesus brings it right up to date when he says, even if you fought the fault, you're a murderer. Moses spoke about adultery if you go with another man's wife or a woman. Jesus says if you fought it in your mind, you've committed adultery. Can you see the difference? The Sermon on the Mount was inwards. He brought it right up to speed. It was inwards where he brought it to. A man put it this way. The sun is brighter than a candle. So the Sermon on the Mount is brighter than the law of Moses. It tells us what kind of Christians we ought to be. Light of the world, salt of the earth, silent in our actions, but great in effect. To let your light shine. See when he starts it we go through the attitudes, and when we hit Matthew 5, 13 and 14. He says you are to be the salt of the earth. You are to be a shining light he says. Are we a shining light? Are we the salt of the earth? Because you can only be them too when you have the rock. When you're standing upon the rock this morning. Because the Sermon on the Mount is the ideal Christian life. It's the perfect Christian life. If we could build our Christianity upon the Sermon on the Mount, now I'm going to give a quick overview of this this morning. You could spend 10 years in this. 
is the perfect lifestyle. From chapter 5 to the end of chapter 7, Jesus is speaking all in the same. It's all the same sermon. Now when I went through this, there was something that I picked up. There was a word that appeared over 13 times. Now we know when Jesus speaks once it's important, twice we switch on, three times we better be listening. Well, 13 times he spoke this word and it was this here. I tell you, I tell you, I tell you. He was telling his disciples, he was telling the crowd, you know, this morning, he's telling you. I'm not telling you the word of God is telling you this morning. And it says this, now there's, out of the 13, I only put four of them out for the sake of time. This is one here. Now in Matthew, Matthew 5, 43, to 40, Matthew 5, 43 to 45, it speaks about forgiveness. He goes, forgive your brother, love your brother. But let's look at the opposite. For the man who builds on the sand, what he says, the flesh says, get even. He wronged me. He upset me. An eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. I'm going to get him back. That's not building on the rock. That's building on the world. That's building on the flesh. Do you know what the Sermon on the Mount says? It says this, love and obedience forgives. Love and obedience forgives. Do you know if you've got a problem with unforgiveness and you want to get even on somebody? I'll tell you what it's like. It's like you drinking poison and waiting for another person to die. It's not going to happen, church. That's not going to happen. Moving on. Love and forgive. Another one I pointed out was in Matthew 6, 32 to 33. And it speaks about seeking the kingdom of God first. The flesh says, make an impact on this world for your glory. Make an impact for your glory. Have the best of everything. Go out in a bang. Have all the nice things. And listen, I'm not against the nice things. The nice things is nice if they're hurt in the right manner. I've got no issue with them. But do you know what Jesus says? But first seek the kingdom of God and all things will be given unto you. First seek God's kingdom. Too many Christians a day is putting things before God and it's idolatry. It's wrong. They're putting houses, yard and all these different things, their empires before God when Jesus has seek his kingdom first. Listen, I'm not a very rich person. I don't have the world of material things, but you want to know something? I'm rich in Christ. I might be, I'm a millionaire in Christ, you want to know why? Because I seek Christ's face. I put the kingdom of God before my needs. Number three. Matthew 7, 13 to 14, speaking about the narrow and the broad way. And this is what I put down. The flesh says, the flesh says, everyone else is doing it and you're missing out. Everybody else is doing it because all the other ones of profession to be Christians is doing it. Doesn't mean you do it. See, the thing we've got to remember, I don't stand my standard on men or women. My standard I put on Jesus Christ because he's perfection. He's the author and the perfection of my faith. Because everyone else is doing it, doesn't mean that we should be doing it. Jesus says this, that you will know them by their fruit. He says you will know them by their fruit. Because they're doing it, doesn't mean we do it. There's no worse when a Christian professes to be a Christian. And he's got the things on the fiddle. When he's telling lies, he catches up. He's not building on the rock. Matthew 6, 4-3. The flesh says, boast about what you were doing and giving. Do you know many people boast about what they do today and what they give? I give so much to the poor. I fed so many people another day. I led a million people to Christ. I helped this one out. I go to the homeless. I go here. I go there. I help that old woman across the road. And they boast and boast and boast and boast. Where is the reward? The Pharisees love to boast. Remember the Pharisees that heard this. The Pharisees love to boast. And what they are and what they did. Do you know Jesus says? To whatever you do. Do not let your left hand see what your right hand gives. He can do it in secret. And your father in heaven will reward you. You know, for the one that boasts, they lost their reward. Save your reward for God and give the glory unto God. I don't want the praises of man. I want the praises of God and give praises back unto God. That was 4 out of 13. And you know, if you had to be honest this morning, brothers and sisters, you know it's right. You know it's the truth this morning. To build upon the right foundation, we are here, we are to hear God's words. And to do them, James 2, James 1, 22, 25 says that we must be doers of the word, just not hearers of the word. We must not stop with just hearing the word or studying the word, his word. On hearing must result in doing. This is what it means to build upon the rock and foundation. What it means to build up, when I hear the words, I put it into practice and that's how I build. That's how I lay the bricks. That's how I build in Christ. Building up and build up because when I hear the words, I go and do the words. The foundation of this parable is obedience to God's word. Obedience that is the evidence of true faith. Go to James 2 verse 14. Obedience is faith to God. When we hear it, we do it and we build. I want to be the wise man. 
Only the one who builds on the foundation of obedience to God's word stands. This obedience calls for repentance and the rejection of salvation by works and to trust in the God of grace to save us through his merciful promises. When we stand on his promises and we stand on his merciful promises, it's not a work-based salvation that I work and work. Listen, I don't work for salvation. I don't do the things because God wants me to. I do them because I want to do them because God has done so much for me. It comes down to this. If we are rooted right, we will live right. Are we rooted in Christ this morning? So many people are rooted into a domination or a church or with a man or met with somebody else. But are you met with Christ? Are you rooted in the foundation this morning? If a person lives according to the Sermon on the Mount, the world might call him a fool. He's took it too far. But Jesus says he is a wise disciple. She is a wise disciple. The world might call you crazy for living to this standard. But Jesus says you are a wise disciple. The wise man puts his full confidence in the rock. Jesus Christ. Or the wise sister puts their full confidence in Jesus Christ. Do you know, let me tell you something. When we're on the rock, we put our confidence in Jesus. We don't need no other rock. We don't need no other way. Just keep your confidence in the rock, Jesus Christ. It says in Isaiah, I was thinking about this this morning. In Isaiah 26, verse 4, it says, Trust in the Lord forever, for the Lord, the Lord is the rock for eternity. He is the eternal rock. Men stumble and fall on the rock, but he is the rock that stands firm when we stand on it. People can't understand it because you want to know why. They've never had the true revelation of it. But we have been enlightened to the truth this morning. We know the truth. Do you know, I posted something on the WhatsApp, but I'm going to finish with this now. Uh, it says this, to be, we should be like the lighthouse, which can shine its light in the storm because it has a solid foundation. It stands. When Jesus started the sermon, he said, you are the light of the world. Your, a lighthouse couldn't stand if it had no foundation. It would sink in the storm when it gets battered to death. But you be the light of the world. Be the one that's got the right foundation and just shine your light. Our brother James shared a message the other day about shine the light. Shine the light. Stand. Build on the rock. Have full confidence in the rock. Go back and go through the Sermon on the Mount. The world may call you crazy by living by it. They might call me crazy. They've done it for nine years. But do I know something? In Jesus' eyes, we're wise. So God bless you this morning and you know... Let's pray for a minute and ask God to move in our lives, to help us to continue to build on the rock, to be the woman, the woman and man of God that we're called to be this morning, to have faith and confidence in the rock because, you know, he had faith in you. We should have more faith in him this morning. Let's bow our heads and pray. Lord Jesus, my God, we thank you that you're the eternal rock this morning, my God, the rock of ages that can stand for all generations, my Lord God, that we will not build in the sand, my God. When storms and trials come, we know we have confidence because the rock is eternal. We stand on Jesus Christ, my God, Lord. Help us to live by, my God, these sayings of yours, my God. Thirteen times you told us, my God, Lord, to, I tell you. Help us to pay heed to the attention, my God, of the blueprint of the Bible that you've laid out for our lives to live by, my God, Lord. The perfect standard of Christian living for the inwards, my God, to forgive, my God, and to live right and take no shortcuts and not to throw away the instructions, my God. And we ask this in Jesus' name. God bless you.